So Rico, Thoreau and Rikus, that you'll all be begging me for mercy. I'm pretty sure you'll everyone will hate me if you keep this up. And we are back. So, all right, we handled so we handled our missions, side missions last time. We upgraded our robots. So, it's time to make our choice. So this would be the third world the Yama that the Yamato has been to. For simplicity's sake, I'd like to assign the world to the following names. First, we have a, the version of the Earth in which the seas evaporated. That would be New Correct Century Dimension. We fought the Martian successors in AD Dimension, and this one will be referred to as Universal Century Dimension. So NCC Dimension, AD Dimension, and UC Dimension. Yeah, and I think now it's time I briefed you on this world. Much as in our, our in your own world, the world of the UC dimension had has had its own one-year war. Though our histories are quite different. In another this world, it was 12 years ago or two years before the war that the invaders came. That would be the hostiles Ryoma fought. While it does seem a bit strange that someone from UC dimension would ne have never heard of the Red Sea. I do believe we have a more than satisfactory explanation for this inconsistency. Please continue, Captain Testarossa. Human event assembled a robot army to repel the invaders, finally exterminating them in a decisive campaign on the moon. It came to be known as the Lunar Conflict. That must be where they used the Getter robots. Indeed, Ryoma Nagare fought the Lunar Conflict, becoming something of a legend. But as the fighting ended, he was imprisoned for the murder of Dr. Sao Tome, a Getter Ray researcher. Though he claims he's innocent. Two years later, the space colony sued for independence from the Earth Federation. Side 3 called itself the Principality of Xeon and declared war. So that's how it began. A key element of the fighting was a new sort of weapon geared towards mass production. Mobile suits. So far, normal. Xeon, having already been development on their suits, gained the upper hand of the war. However, the tide turned in the face of the sheer strength of the Federation. Of course it did. Same, of course it did. The same thing happened in our world. Zeon lost. But it was at this point that a critical historical divergence, uh, divergence occurred in the NCC dimension. I was assuming this would be the Gamelan invasion. In the closing stage of the war, Zeon had seen the loss of Solomon, the strategic point, and Dr. Sautome had fomented insurrection on Earth. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute, I thought Ryoma Nagari had already killed Dr. Sautome. It was turned later, real later that he'd been turned into a host by the invaders. Wait, are they parasites? Invaders are able... Invaders... Wow, uh, that's a typo. Invaders have the ability to infect their surroundings. It is, it's true for both organic and inorganic material, which makes for a very likely explanation. I think I get it. The ones we fought in Enceladus must have melted with, with the surrounding Mecha. The Federation had already devoted most of its strength to fighting off Xeon, leading Ryoma to conclude matters. He fought single-handedly to get a robot against Dr. Sautome's force. However, in the midst of the battle, it was discovered the invaders hadn't been exterminated after all. Faced with the, with the solution, Earth Federation plot the by the speedy resolution. Deuteron missile aimed straight for the invaders' gathering point, Dr. Sautome's lab. And as we made contact, the Earth crumbled under the weight of Clumpy Hair 24 on scene. The second impact. In other words, welcome to Neon Genesis Evangelion. But why second? Well, what better name for explosions so like the meteor impact that gave forth to our own moon? We're still not sure it is caused, but its effects shook Earth to the very its very foundations. One of those the corruption of every existing sea. Important note, um, for those of you who haven't seen originally Evangelion but have seen the rebuild, 
In original, the oceans are blue. In rebuild, the oceans are red. And there are theories as to why the difference is, but we're not probably not gonna get into that here. That would explain the Red Sea. While the dimensional quake did manage to destroy the missile, it also managed to release the Getter Rays stored in Dr. Satome's lab laboratory, bringing them across the planet. The damage was incalculable. And after which Ryoma Nagari became a no ghost, according to the records. So I see, I see. So according to this world's timeline, the dimensional quake caused him to support, transport into a world more than 10 years after. So the Red Sea thing did happen after he left. But what exactly are getaways? They do exactly what the plot wants them to do. Okay, I have a cat on my, on my lap. I'm trying to keep her from chewing on the headphone cable. They have a variety of cosmic ways. Some say they have the power to hasten evolution. While they can be used as a power source, overexplosion, overexposure to them can be wholly destructive, both ecologically and biologically. Given the authority of Geta Rays, Dr. Satome's death put a halt in any research into the subject. So the planet, the, so, so the planet is hit by a second impact of Geta Rays. Did that end the war? Leon, despite leading his leadership to the defeat of the zombie family, had more than enough strength to move left to move the war to its end stages. The Federation was spending a great deal of effort toward restoring the Earth, allowing anti-Federation forces to consolidate their strength. And 13 years after the war, it is first means to end restoration. The brutal Titans had taken an increasing the elite Titans had taken an increasingly brutal stance toward the colonies. The Lord received the Zeta Gundam territory now. The internal spat became known as the Grips con uh, conflict, while Xeon had been organized under Hammond Karn. Agrarians and Hammond Karn. So it began the first Neo Zeon War. That, so, Grip's conflict is Gundam Zeta. First Neo Zeon War is Gundam Double Zeta. With Shara's defeat, the torch passed to Shara's novel, sparking off the second Neo Zeon War. That would be Gun that would be Shara's counterattack. The same wars happened in our world, but some of it is pretty freaking different. Okita, you are not the kind of man to say the word freaking. You're also not the kind of man to say fucking either. Yeah, they even have the exact same names, but they happen at different times here. The second war saw the Federation at severe disadvantage. By using an elite team composed of Gundams, the Federation managed to destroy the Neo Zeon leadership and secure a somewhat symbolic victory. The Neo Zeons held on to a lot of the strength, which means it's only a matter of time before the fighting starts again. It couldn't be more correct. The Neo Zeon is currently laying the ground record's final battle with the Federation. Be right back. Give me a second. Sorry about that itch in my throat. All ignited under Shara's novel's banner. He's MIA in our world, him and Amuro Ray. Yes, though Commander Amuro escaped to a parallel universe, he is still alive and well. No reason why the same couldn't be true for Shara's novel. This brings a whole new meaning to the uh, whole thing of full frontal and Gundam Unicorn, because I think that's what they're setting up here is uh, Gundam Unicorn. In that series, Gun um, <clears throat> quote unquote full frontal is literally a shark clone like not just like the metaphorical shark clones like um, trait like um, Zex Marquis in uh, Gundam Wing but a literal clone of Shara's novel but the Red Comet is still alive eh maybe this world can help answer some questions we have about our own meaning what exactly we are not sure whose fault it is, or if there's anyone to blame at all. A good deal of the ten years that spans Shars Rebellion, the Second War, is lost to us. Indeed, to us it's almost a century in the past. Not a direct subject to many, except for a few historians. Which, of course, leaves us in our current situation. We are, we are aware of the actions of Neo Zeon remnants of, in those ten years, and the major, major terrorist incident afterwards. I see. Mimi. I know. We won't mention the 
I won't mention the Mufti incident here. So in this world, Neo Zeon is running the war against the Federation. I don't think it can rightly be called a war. At the root of it all, one of your wars are war for independence against from the Federation. And because the Federation got the upper hand, the later convicts could be split in a way of settling the bad blood from the one year war. It's also sad. And now the fighting between Zeon and Federation is coming to an end. Since the action drop failed, they'd be more direct, trying to take Earth by force. Fifteen years of built up hatred, delivered in the shape of total war. In our world, it was the Jupiter Empire. Mithril started as a multi-pirate military button to prevent local conflicts. So he worked the Federation in the face of what seemed to be an indiscriminate attack from Xeon. You must have known your chances wouldn't be good. One doesn't fight in order to lose. I know exactly what you mean. Which means the Red Earth is bound to succumb to human infighting. Years and months turn ill will to hatred, when it finally blows over, you could hardly call that war. So the blame for somebody can be placed at the feet of the Federation. In terms of atrocities they committed, Titan's image as a space going extermination squad. We haven't forgotten that. The Federation's captain spoke of Londo Bell in the last battle. Who were they? An independent group within the Federation, headed by a special forces unit, they played a major hand in securing victory in early, earlier fights against Neo Zeon. They, they, they aimed to bring wars to a close in the early stages while avoiding excessive collateral damage. Among them are Commando Amaro, Udo Ashta, and Am and Hathaway Noah. They're also the ones whom Mithril finds itself in direct cooperation with. So there are some out there who haven't lost their heads with hatred. Perhaps there's still hope. Possibly, but there's talk of them being of being better used under the direction of the regular army. I propose we touch base with Wando Bell before taking any further action. I'm sure they would be of great service to you. Mm -hmm. Well, and here's our decision point. Contact Wando Bell, or go it alone. Nobody's watching right now. So I am going to go. If you've seen my Twitter avatar, did you guess what I'm going with here? Which is to contact Londo Bell. There's the question of supplies. We'll contact Londo Bell. This is Londo Bell and gather more intelligence. Make sure we're safe. Like, even, like, putting aside the fact that I'm a fan of Mobile Suit Gundam and that sort of thing. The fact is, from a narrative standpoint, this is a pretty good smart thing for them to go, for them to do. Okita and company, rather, um, Jatose and company did well by joining up with um, <clears throat> Nandisko and Nergal back in the previous universe. It would make sense for them to do something similar here. We also have to consider our future action. I have to agree with Commander Okita. It's reasonable given our current situation. Understood, I'll put a word out to them. And about this Gamelus situation. We're glad to work with you on the counterattack. If you don't mind me asking. Considering your repayment for helping us in our fight, our fate is intertwined with the Yamatos. And until we can all get home, we should think of ourselves as allies. We have the deepest gratitude from both me and my crew. The message we need to intercept in the battle state the Gamelin forces arrived here three days ago. We need to settle this before they drag this world into chaos. The help is, is more than welcome, but we can't drag them too deeply into our fight. But the Federation knew about this. We've got a call from Commander Marticus, Captain. The Industrial Seven Colony site has been attacked by Neo Zeon. What? That's where. Yep. We're about to get the Gundam Unicorn. New dialogue sequence. Hmm. Must be shocking to find yourself ten years in the future. I guess. I'm still me, though. No use wasting energy on it. Are you sure? There has to be someone you want to see. You must have friends. Or maybe a girlfriend. Not after I went to prison. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I, I wasn't thinking. Settle down, Shitosin. It was just a joke. I mean, it's literally in the past. I mean, who would I want to see? Especially since it sounded like the old man bit it in that battle. 
can't just be coincident can't be coincidence that we all ended up here. I'll just stick with you for now. Thank you, Ryoma! Is a non-issue for now. It's gonna be about our timing. Hmm. What's the deal, Nine? Nothing. It's nothing. I want to have faith in you too, Tetsuya. Okay. Alright, so I have a bunch of more attack points, which, since we have max leveled our attack customize, we can buy some of this stuff now. Rescue units, medallion. So we've excluding recommended items. Okay. All right. Um, damage boost, movement boost. Range boost. Let's get another uh, resupply device. For rescue unit. And before we get to find anything else, um. We got fresh level of of, uh, of um, sub orders, so all right. So level them up. Actually, no, not these ones. Not Mal, because I need to up her kill count. All right, so I need to up. Just a second, we forgot this correct. So I need to up, um... Sasuke. Alright, Chitose, Akito, and Kincaid are probably going to... hit 50 and ace pretty soon. Um... Actually, no, let's do... Let's get these guys up to ace sooner. Alright. And the rest of these... ...is Mr. Buggy and Cash attack points, so we're fine. Attack points... 
Satose will hit Ace next turn, next mission. We all level up. And a bunch of extra cash. Gundam's abilities up. Alright. And now that we've make an, made our choice, save our game real quick. Time to contact Londo. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.